In this recording, we'll learn how to calculate uncertainty in repeated measurements and how to visualize that uncertainty. So let's get started. For example, a ball rolled from an inclined plane lands on the ground and it lands near, let's say, 17.5 centimeters. When we roll next, what happens? Oh, it lands far from there, nearly 18 centimeter. So the spread is way larger than the resolution of this device, which is tenth of a centimeter in this case. So when the spread is larger than the resolution of device, what do we do? We keep rolling again and again until we get a random distribution of data that looks like a bell curve. In this table, you see repeated measurements of the time. So there are eight data points. So let's take a look how we can use Excel to calculate uncertainty and we'll come back to this visualization. The formula for the uncertainty is a standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of the number of data points. And the Excel function looks something like this. So before I use any formula in Excel, I need to type the equal sign and then I start typing standard deviation and there are quite a few suggestions here. I like to use standard deviation for the sample, not the standard deviation for the population. And then I need to enter the range of the data. So I can manually type it uh, or I can just select the first one and then hold the shift key and the select rest one. So as you can see it shows you the range. And now I close the parenthesis and hit the enter sign and that gives me the standard deviation. So the next step is to just find the uncertainty from that standard deviation. So that means all I need to do is I need to again type equal sign, select the standard deviation I already calculated and divide that by the square root of the number of data points. And in this case we have 8 data. So I'm going to be using this number 8 and then close the parenthesis, hit enter and there is uncertainty. Let's also calculate the average of the data because we're going to be using this a lot. So for this I start by typing equal sign and then I type average or choose average from the list and then type the range this time. E2, E9 and hit the close parenthesis. As you can see the data is highlighted now. So that means we are calculating the average of all this data. And hit enter and there is average. Now we have the mean value and the uncertainty of uh, this data. Now we can see uh, this time measurement is not a fixed value, rather it's an interval. To visualize this, we represent the mean value by the dot and we draw whiskers on both sides to represent the uncertainties. We can use this method of visualization to compare two sets of data and tell if those sets practically giving us same result or a different result. So for example, let's suppose this is the visualization obtained by group A and group B also obtained the visualization by doing the similar experiment and the uncertainty plot looks like this. So what do we see here? Although the mean are very different, what we find is these whiskers are overlapping. So that means these two sets of data agrees if 
the uncertainties are overlapping. So, but we have to be careful about this overlap. So, for example, if one group has really large uncertainty, uh, the whiskers may overlap no matter what. So, we have to keep the uncertainty within certain range. Smaller the better. So, we in general, if it is within 10 20 percent and the whiskers are overlapping, then we can say, okay, two sets of data agree. They, they are giving essentially giving the same value. Notice we are using delta t to represent standard deviation in this case. We use delta t bar, notice the difference, to represent the uncertainty. So we're not talking about uncertainty here, rather we are talking about standard deviation. For our data, this range turns out to be this. So, if we look at the data carefully, what we find is there are 6 out of 8 total data they are within this range. Means nearly two-thirds of the data in this interval. So, this interval is also called confidence interval. That means our confidence level is nearly two-thirds if we were to take ninth data from the same setup. If we want to increase the confidence level, uh, then what we can do is we can increase this interval. So rather than taking the interval with one standard deviation, we can use interval with two standard deviation. So in that case, in our example, we get larger interval. All of them are in this interval, but just one, which is 487. It means for this interval, our confidence level is nearly 100%. More precisely, it is 95%.